Are you afraid to quit drinking? Does the thought of never drinking again, never drinking on a Friday, not drinking at the weekend, not drinking tomorrow, fill you with fear, send shivers down your spine and bring you out in a cold sweat? If so, then this podcast is for you. Today I'm talking to you about coping with the fear of quitting drinking, coping with the fear of sobriety and what to do if you are afraid to quit drinking, even though it's still the thing that you want most in the world. Hello, hello, welcome to this week's podcast with me, Gail from Sober Bliss and Happy almost Halloween as I'm recording this to you today. It's Saturday the 29th of October. Halloween is just around the corner on Monday the 31st. Um, And All Hallows Eve, Halloween, is a time of magic and mystery. And it's a tradition, it's a celebration that goes back to the original ancient Celtic festival of Samhain when people would light bonfires and wear costumes to ward off ghosts and it's thought that Halloween is a time when the veil between the worlds of the living and the dead becomes thinner making it easier for us to communicate with the spirits. It's my absolute favorite celebration and not just because it's my birthday obviously makes it even better but it's also for me the time of the year when we get to embrace our dark side a little bit um, and scare ourselves silly and face our fears but in a way that feels safe exciting and fun and that's what we're going to be talking about today embracing our fears and hopefully i'm going to explain to you how you can do that in a way that feels safe exciting and fun but before i do that before i get on and share um all about that in the podcast i do have a very special birthday offer for you that i want to talk about quickly now it's only available on sunday the 30th and monday the 31st of october 2022 and I've dropped the price for those two days of the monthly support membership from £29 a month down to just 20 so if you join the membership on Sunday the 30th or Monday the 31st of October you will pay £20 a month um, instead of 29 which it currently is and that's all you pay, even when the price goes back up again for the you know new people joining after that, you will only pay that price. So that's down from twenty nine pounds to twenty pounds, or in dollars, I think it's about from thirty seven dollars a month down to about twenty four. So Sunday and Monday only. Um and yeah, on November the first, twenty twenty two, prices will go back up. So if you've been sitting on the fence, um, this is such a great time to join. And if you're not sure what the Blissfully Sober support space is, it's our gorgeous monthly membership, helping women to feel inspired, uplifted and empowered by their choice to quit drinking so they can live the life that they've been dreaming of without alcohol holding them back it's a safe space it's a place where you can access weekly coaching because there's an app as well we run it on mighty networks it means you've got 24 7 support there's a fabulous community also accountability and obviously the connection there which is going to help you to break the cycle that you're currently stuck in that you know that cycle of drinking too much wanting to stop but not being able to and um, when we'll help you do that in a way that feels good for you it's also the place where i hang out the most so you've got direct access to me i'm in there every day more or less and what else do you get 
every month we, yeah, we've got a gorgeous library of growing resources so you get a lovely meditation every month there's a new workshop or workbook or mini course for you to work through and get support from so if you've been putting this off as I said if you've been wanting to join but not quite sure maybe you've been scared to join and I'm going to help you with that in a moment then this is the perfect time for you to face your fear, take the step, jump in, get the support you need at a really amazing price. Obviously only Sunday the 30th of October and Monday the 31st. Um, yeah, so come on and join us. I really look forward to seeing you on the inside. And I will put the link in the show notes so you can go ahead and join straight away. And I'll see you very soon. Okay, so back to the podcast then. We're talking about fear of drinking, being scared to stop drinking, I should say. Uh, fear of sobriety. Um, and it's such, well, obviously it's an important topic to talk about any time because your fear just doesn't happen randomly on Halloween. But because it is Halloween, uh, I thought it would be a nice topic for us to talk about today. And just a bit of behind the scenes, I suppose, a bit of insights into what I'm doing this Halloween. Well, I've been putting together a little library of scary things to watch on on TV um scary movies and tv series and things to watch and i've started watching on the recommendation of a friend although i'm not quite sure if i'm going to call her a friend anymore after i finished watching it <laughs> um the haunting of hill house have you seen it oh god it's so scary um it starts off well i didn't think oh this is not very scary but it is actually really scary and i'm finding it so creepy that I was too scared in the night last night to get up and go to the bathroom <laughs> by myself. So I had to wait until this morning when it was light. <laughs> That's how scary it is. Um, but other than that, what else have I done? I've got my pumpkin already carved. My husband's made some lovely tea holder light candle things out of empty tins of um, tin tomatoes. Because we eat a lot of tin tomatoes at the moment. And he's made he's drilled little holes in, made little patterns and put a tea light in. So they're really gorgeous. And of course my witch's hat and broomstick are dusted off and ready to go. And I'm really excited. This is going to be alcohol free Halloween, alcohol free birthday for me, number five. And I can honestly say that Alcohol-free birthdays and Halloweens and any celebration really are just the best. They're so much better without alcohol. Uh, they were actually one of the things I was scared of the most. How do you celebrate birthdays and things without drinking? But they are just the best. And I've got lots more resources. There's podcasts, blogs, obviously things in the membership to help you with that if you're interested in how to celebrate Halloween without drinking this year. And again, I'll put all the links underneath this podcast description. So you can go and check them out. Um, so yeah, I want to talk to you about today a very specific thing when it comes to quitting drinking. And that is obviously our fear. Fear of sobriety. Fear of quitting drinking. And the fact that it does make us so afraid. And it is such a scary thought not to drink again. Um, but fear itself is, well, it's such a massive topic. Obviously, Elizabeth Gilbert in Big Magic talks about it a lot. So she's the expert, I suppose, on fear. If you want to go check that out. But um, fear can be... Um, something to embrace like we do at this time of year for example you know we do s make an effort to scare ourselves silly <laughs> and do things that perhaps we wouldn't normally 
do you know we do things that are scary they take us out of our comfort zone and they but they leave us at the same time feeling you know a little bit wild a little bit crazy exhilarated even and, and alive and this happens because we have done something that feels scary we have pushed past the fear um, and done it anyway and it feels absolutely amazing however when it comes to quitting drinking for example or anything new I suppose I could go broad and say that anything new or different in our lives because it is so alien and unknown and yes scary we can't let the fear hold us back you know the first feeling of uncomfortableness of the first like feeling of dread in the pit of our stomachs then that's often enough to stop us right there in our tracks and hold us back instead of you know propel us forward like we might do on Halloween for example um and fear is probably the only reason, the biggest reason why we don't do the things that we want to do, like quitting drinking, for example. Fear is why we maybe have a few days, weeks, months of sobriety, and then we go back to drinking again. Something happens, something happens that scares us or a thought creeps in and it feels big and scary and overwhelming and I did that for the longest time as well you know for the longest time I wanted to stop drinking it was the thing that I most wanted to do in the world but yeah it was also the thing that scared me the most whenever I thought of not drinking again even the word sobriety you know, I felt afraid of it. And maybe you do too. Because with, with me and probably you too, if drinking has been such a huge part of, of your life, something that you probably do every day, um, then the thought of never doing it again, the thought of never drinking again ever, or even the thought of not drinking tomorrow, can be terrifying it can be the scariest thing in the world and I know what that feels like and I just want to say that it's okay it's okay to be afraid it's perfectly natural and normal actually to be afraid these are human emotions human feelings and if we didn't have them then there would be something wrong but the thing about fear is and I'll talk to you more about this in a moment but the main thing with fear is are you going to let it keep you stuck are you going to let your fear of sobriety your fear of a better healthier more authentic life because that's what it is are you going to let that fear stop you from doing the thing that you most want in the world And I think the biggest fear that we face when we're thinking about sobriety, it's not really, you know, the act of not drinking. Anyone can not drink. It's not really the fear of quitting drinking as such. You know, often we make that decision every day. I'm not drinking today and then it feels fine and exciting even. But then something happens later on. And it's the thoughts that cause the fear to come up. It's often the thought of never drinking again or never drinking on a Friday that is the scariest of all. And it's probably the fear of the unknown, which is the worst. Yes, obviously, when we think about not drinking, specific fears do come up. Fears such as, Fear of failure, that's probably the biggest one. What will people think? Oh my God, my life's going to be over. I'm going to be so bored. Or oh, I'm going to become boring. 
I'm going to lose all my friends. Everyone's going to judge me. They might whisper behind my back that I'm an alcoholic. You know, how will I cope? Scared that you might not be able to sleep again. Scared that Friday nights won't be the same. All of those things. But really, the main fear is that feeling. It's the fear itself actually and what that might mean or or look like for you and if you want some specific help on specific fears so maybe at the moment it is the fear of what will people think or my life was going to look completely different and I don't know how to feel about that for example I do have a blog about the seven most common fears that we experience when we think about quitting drinking so if you want some specific support around those or you're interested to know what they are read that blog um it's full of useful advice and support and again i'll put the link underneath the show notes but whatever um specific fear you might have about sobriety or even if you're just afraid of the thought of it the idea of it is what's scaring you the most then the only way to get past it the only way to move through it the only way to not let it hold your back hold you back rather is to to look at it and that's a scary thought but it is the only way you have to shine a light on it. You have to bring it out into the open. You have to look at it and accept that it's a thing that you're feeling and going through and know that it's okay. Because when you can do that, when you can look at it, accept it, examine it, then you can work through it. Um, and just know that Everything you might be feeling or experiencing when it comes to being afraid of quitting drinking is perfectly normal and natural. So don't be ashamed of that fear. Don't hide from it. Don't let it bring you down. I think as Elizabeth Gilbert says in um, Big Magic, fear is something that we carry around with us everywhere we go. You know, we bring it in the car with us. But what we must never do is let it drive. So don't be afraid of fear. Don't try and hide from it. Don't try and run from it. Don't try and pretend it doesn't exist. Because, it, you know, it's there. We have to deal with it. Um, but don't let it run the show. And never, ever let it be an excuse to keep you stuck. To keep you from moving forward um because right now if you're listening to this you might be in a place where you're desperate to stop drinking but you're equally as terrified you're scared of what alcohol is doing to you you're scared of how it's affecting your life and getting in the way of you doing the things that you want to do maybe it's affecting your health, your relationships, and that's scary. But equally, the alternative feels scarier still. So what do you do? Well, you've got two choices. You can stay stuck and fearful, or you can not let your fears continue to keep you stuck, rule your life. Um, you know, you're never going to break free of the cycle if you stay stuck and afraid. And hopefully in this podcast, I'm going to help you to move past the fear. And I want to help you manage these feelings of fear that you're feeling. Um, put them into perspective so you can move on and you can reach out. You can get the support you need and you can take this really big yes scary step but it's also the most inspiring uplifting and exhilarating thing that you will ever do in your life and I don't want you to stay stuck 
because of fear. Um, and Halloween aside, I know it's Halloween as you're listening to this, but Halloween aside, you know, scary movies aside, I bet that you've done loads of things that have felt scary at first. So while fear of quitting drinking, fear of sobriety, being scared to stop drinking might feel like the biggest thing in your life and that you just don't know how to do it and it's just too big and scary, I want you to know and remember that you've done scary things before. So you can do it and it might just be worth looking back and gathering a bit of evidence to support that. I've done lots of things that have felt scary at first. So obviously you have, and it can be anything like, I don't know, a new job, moving, moving village, town, city, country even, learning to drive, meeting new people, a, a new career. We've all done scary things. We've all done things that when the idea first comes to us, we're like, oh. I can never do that. That's far too scary. Yet we've done it anyway. For me, learning to drive was the most scary thing that I could ever imagine. Even the thought of getting in the car made me shake, sweat. I remember I had to take, um, oh, what's it called? Backs, calming liquid drop things, flower remedy or something like that. Um, just to calm me down enough so I could actually get in the car. I hated it. I really hated it. Scariest thing ever. But I did it. And now looking back, I'm really proud that I managed to learn to drive because it was just honestly terrified me so much. And maybe you've experienced something like that before. Something that you've done. Something that really scared you. And you've done it anyway. And then... When you've come out the other side, you've just felt so proud and amazing and pleased with yourself. And it's probably opened up doors and changed your life. And this is no different. So you've done it before and you can absolutely do it again. And just think back to that experience, you know, the thing that you did, even though it was scary how did that change your life? And what would have happened if you'd allowed your fear to stop you from doing it? Where would you be now if you hadn't taken that job, learned to drive, gone on that blind date, you know, picked up the phone, sent the email, whatever? How would of allowing your fear to stop you have changed that? Right? So you've done it before, I know you have, and that means you can absolutely do it again. And how are we going to do that? As I said in the beginning, the only way, in my opinion, the most powerful way to get past your fears is to have a look at them, to bring them out in the open and to shine a light on them. So I'm going to ask you you think about this when it comes to quitting drinking what are you afraid of and I mean what really what are you really afraid of some of the women that I work with in the membership as I've mentioned before or in my one-to-one -one coaching program tell me that the things that scare them the most include not being able to manage emotions losing their identity you know often people come to me and they are the party girl or you know the hostess with the mostest who's always got amazing drinks and always provides the best time um and they're scared of what removing alcohol from their lives will remove from their identity some people are scared of being judged being talked about being shunned by friends, being, you know, whispered about behind their backs, um, being thought of as a problem drinker or an alcoholic, um, 
some people are scared that they won't know how to unwind at the end of the day or sleep or relax or have fun. But most of all, what it boils down to is that people are scared of living life without numbing it, living life in the raw, living life, you know, on HD, I suppose, with all the emotions and thoughts and feelings right there out in the open to be dealt with. And they're scared of who they are, who they might be once they remove the the layers, the protection, if you like, of alcohol. And that is a scary thought when you can no longer numb and hide. But it also means that you can begin to work on the real reason you drink, which is the most powerful way to have a happy successful sobriety so what I want you to do is you can pause this and go and do it now you can make notes and then take your time with it at the end of the podcast but have a think about what it is that really scares you about not drinking so be specific go into as much detail as you can and write a big long list of everything that scares you about quitting drinking So from the small crazy things to, you know, the big really scary things, get it all written down. And it doesn't matter how small or crazy or silly or ridiculous it sounds, it's obviously bringing something up in you. So you need to look at it. I remember reading Denise Stuffield Thomas's book, um, Get Rich, Lucky Bitch, and she talked about how she really wanted to have a mansion on the beach in Australia but she was so scared of buying this beachside mansion um, in case it got swept away by a tsunami. Now this was a ridiculous fear, it probably is never going to happen in a million years but it was still a fear that kept her stuck, it kept her from moving past this block and moving forward and achieving her dream of buying a mansion on the beach and she had to get past that fear by looking at it and examining it and dealing with it in order to move forward and um, she does have a mansion on the beach so get all your fears out onto paper get them out in the open and um, and we're going to look at them and just know that it's okay Whatever your fear is, whatever the thing is that you're scared of, it's absolutely okay. Don't judge yourself or beat yourself up about it. Um, You know, if you're worried that dinner with friends won't be the same, then write that down. It's okay. If you're worried that um, you might have to, I don't know, turn to crochet or knitting to relax in the evening, and that's okay too. These things are not as scary as we think they are they're just different they're just new they're just unknown um and actually that worth bringing up one of the main fears that we have is not so much the specific details it's more that everything is going to change our life as we know it is going to change which is really perfectly understandable And I just want to say that life will change. But actually, that's the point, don't you think? So it's okay to be afraid. Don't make it wrong to have these fears. It's okay to be afraid of the unknown, the new, the ridiculous. But it's not okay, however, to let those fears keep you stuck. And it's also worth noting that When you do stop drinking, when you do take that step, your perspective will completely change. So imagine yourself now, the thoughts, feelings, fears that you've got right now. And then just imagine that you stop drinking tomorrow. You're going to be in a completely different place next week, next month, even tomorrow than you are right now. So often the fear is nothing to do with actually how it's going to play out. 
my biggest fear for example was what do I do for a whole weekend and not drink I just couldn't imagine that it was so alien to me and I just terrified at the thought but yet when I did my very first weekend alcohol free it was nothing like I'd imagined there was absolutely nothing to be scared of at all but it wasn't until I'd taken the step and actually done it and experienced it that I realized that my fear was unfounded so it's worth bearing that in mind Even though your fears are valid, probably, and genuine, they might not actually be true. And to help you with that, we're going to examine your fears one by one. And I'll just start with one example, but we're going to pull them apart and decide, actually, is this really true? So we're going to look at your beliefs around the fear, where the fears come from. And, you know, declutter some of those beliefs and shine a light on the fear that you've got. So, for example, let's look at the common fear that people have, which you might have on your list. And that is life is going to be boring when you quit drinking. You're just going to be so bored. Life's going to be over and you're not going to have any fun ever again. I can relate to that. Um, I had no idea what on earth I would do for fun, (laughs) what I would do um, if my time wasn't filled with drinking, like I just said before. What do people do a whole weekend without drinking? That was my thought. Oh my God, it's going to be so boring. Um, I'm just going to sit around twiddling my thumbs all day. What kind of life is that? Um, (laughs) So I can relate if that's one of your worries. If you're worried that you might be bored or become boring as well, that's another one. Um, Then look closely at where this belief comes from. And it's probably from other drinking friends who are like, come on, let's have some fun. Let's go down to the pub. Oh, don't be boring. Stay at home. Come out with us instead. Um that's probably where it comes from but have a think like where does this idea come from that not drinking is boring but I just want to say that actually if you look closely at it sitting on the sofa all weekend pouring glass after glass of wine watching programs that you never remember anyway that sounds pretty boring This is why it's important to look at these beliefs you have, look at these fears, where they come from and really dig deep and ask yourself, why is this fear um, making me feel this way? And then explore actually what you can do about it. What can you do instead? So let's stick with the bored one and being boring. It's really helpful to think, okay, well, It's a big fear of mine. I am scared that I'll be bored or that I'll become a boring person. What can I do about it? What can I do instead that isn't boring? And if you take the time, and I hope that you do, to write a list of all the other millions of things that you can do instead of sitting on the sofa drinking all night, then you'll actually find that not drinking is about as far removed from boring as you can get. And if you listen to the podcast I had with Claire from Rehab Studios, then she's a perfect example of why her fear of being bored or boring was completely unfounded. And, okay, say that you are bored if you stop drinking. I want you to ask yourself, what's so bad about that? You know, what's actually wrong with being bored? And this is, again, just one example. You can do this for your other items on the list. But actually being bored is not really such a bad thing. I do think that we we do drink and we do fill our time with being busy, busy, busy because boring is something just 
we're not used to. However, moments of peace and quiet and stillness do open the gate for so much more creativity for one. So pick your fear and ask yourself, what's the worst that can happen? So your fear is that you might be bored. Okay, what's the worst that can happen if you're bored? Is it really the end of the world? Is it really, you know, such a big deal? Are you going to die because you're bored? Is being a little bored with people or activities that you used to do so bad? Of course, if you go out with your ex-drinking buddies or your drinking buddies and they're drinking and you're not, then that is pretty boring. But that just shines a light on maybe you shouldn't be doing that anymore. Maybe you need to mix with other people. Maybe you find you need to find more fun things to do. So the fear of being bored is actually an opportunity to do something about it. And like I said before, the truth is that actually, um, I'm saying that word a lot today, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> the thing that you're scared of can be an opportunity. And it might not be as bad as you think it is. For example, just to share with you what some of our members in the Blissfully Sober Support Membership have experienced. And they've faced many of their fears. For example, dinner with friends. One lovely lady shared that she was going out with her husband on a date for the first time since she'd stopped. Um, and she was really scared about that, ended up having a wonderful time. Others have gone on holiday for the first time sober. They've had a difficult conversation they didn't think they'd be able to have without drinking. And even some of them have had to deal with grief and loss, which is such a scary thing if you've never had to do that before without drinking. And I have to say that each and every one of them have said that yes, there were moments when it was difficult and painful and uncomfortable, even a dinner date with the husband. However, it wasn't as bad as they thought. And it was such an eye opening and exhilarating experience once they got through the pain, for example. And they all said that they felt stronger for doing it anyway, even though it was scary. They felt empowered and inspired and uplifted and so much more confident in themselves for navigating that situation and coming out stronger than ever. And that's what can happen when you don't let fear stop you, when you don't let fear get in the way because when you move past that fear, you get to experience such joy and happiness and excitement and amazing experiences. So I want you to think about that as you're looking at your fears. Think about what staying scared and stuck will mean, but also try and imagine what could happen if you don't let your fear keep you stuck and these practical tips might help you is if you're still struggling now you're feeling fear of not drinking fear of sobriety for a reason which is what i said earlier on Often the fear we're feeling is keeping us stuck. It's keeping us in our comfort zone. It's preventing us from actually dealing with what needs to be dealt with. And that's the thing that's scaring us the most. But these feelings we're having are normal and natural. You know, we're human. We are supposed to feel these things. And it's normal and safe to have these feelings. What is not normal and not safe is to numb them out. We know what happens when we numb out our feelings with alcohol. So the only way to really work through the fear is to sit with the feelings. And that can be the scariest thing of all. 
just allowing them to come up and notice what happens can be really scary. But this is where the magic happens. This is where you push through and enter in some, you know, amazing place within yourself that you just didn't know existed. This is where the strength comes from. This is where the confidence comes from and the empowerment. And it takes practice and kindness and being really gentle. But it does get easier the more you do it. And you do absolutely come out stronger for doing with it. So some things to look out for if the thought of something, you know, brings out a sensation of fear within you. What does that feel like? That's such a good place to start. So you might experience a strong physical sensation of fear in your body. For me, fear can feel like that deep feeling of dread, you know, in the pit of your stomach. Or it might be kind of a a sharp intake of breath and a feeling of anxiety in your chest. So think of, you know, when you think of a scary thing, how does it feel in your body? Because sometimes if we can just sit with the physical sensation and send love and light and healing to the physical sensation, it helps with the overall experience of fear. So if it's a feeling in the pit of your stomach, you know, try and really get specific with that. How big is it? Where exactly is it? What shape is it even? Does it have a color? Sometimes these things come to mind. And put your hands on the area of your body where you're feeling this scary feeling of fear. And just send some love and light and healing energy to it. It might sound a bit soft doing that, a bit woo-woo. But it really works. If we can deal with the physical and be kind and gentle, then it's such a lovely thing to do. It's also worth thinking about or noticing the thoughts that come up when we experience these physical sensations of fear. Because often it is actually the thought that is a scary thing, not the feeling itself. For example, and you probably know this already, but I'm going to say it anyway. Fear and excitement produce exactly the same physical sensations in your body. So think about that for a moment. If I'm really excited about something, like my birthday, um, then I get that same feeling in my stomach. But I don't associate it with the dread and the heavy feeling. I associate it with the thing that's making me excited. Even though physically it's exactly the same. So you might like to try changing your thoughts around the feeling that you're having. Instead of saying things like, oh, this is so scary, this is so scary, I'm never going to do it. Change your thoughts to, this is exciting. This is an opportunity for me. Maybe I could do this. What if I pushed through my fear and did it anyway this is good I feel empowered by this feeling this feeling's making me strong words to that effect and just see how your perception changes and keep saying these things over and over until you associate that feeling of you know instead of being dread and fear of excitement and feeling good about something and just see how that changes your perspective around quitting drinking. Now I know this is a lot of information to take in today so take your time with this podcast, pause it, reflect on what I'm saying, go away and make notes and come back to it, do some of the exercises and don't forget that if you need help with anything that I'm sharing with you today, then you just have to reach out. I'm here for you, whether that 
be at the end of an email, in the membership or one-to-one coaching. And it's worth remembering that often these fears, these scary thoughts that come up are not you. It's the addictive part of your brain, the wine witch, I suppose, the beer monster that sneaks in and whispers things in your ear, which is why you often wake up feeling strong, empowered, excited about not drinking. And then come four o'clock, you standing in front of the fridge again, because the wine witch has got in there. She's whispered things to you that make you feel afraid. But it's not actually you. So if you can separate the thoughts from who you actually are, then that's a massive step in moving through your fear. And remember that while I'm trying to help you move past your fear, deal with your fear, again, Everyone's scared when they're trying something new or when the thought of something new comes up and it's normal and it's natural. So embrace it, use it to help you and think about what it is that actually scares you the most. This might be really helpful for you. What is more scary? Facing these situations, these events, the day-to-day without a drink and managing it and working through it and getting stronger and more confident or staying where you are, stuck, afraid, scared for the future, in the horrible cycle again and again. That's kind of what did it for me, I suppose, when I really think about it. Yes, I was scared of stopping drinking, but I was also scared of staying where I was. And staying where I was was more scary than taking the plunge, taking the step and not drinking. So have a think about that. What is scarier for you? Taking the leap or staying stuck? Honestly, don't let your fear of sobriety, your fear of change or your fear of the unknown even stop you from living the life you deserve. And yes, there will be difficult times ahead. I've said it before, sobriety is not all rainbows and unicorns. (laughs) There will be times though when it's rainbows and unicorns and you will experience so many wonderful things that you just didn't think would be possible and it really is a gift honestly not drinking really is a gift and I think you owe it to yourself to work through the fears to have a go to see what's on the other side of fear and experience the magic that a life free from alcohol can be so if This podcast, if my words, if some of the thoughts flying around your head right now are inspiring you to think a little bit more about this, um, about your own fears and what you can do about them, and you want some help and support, then I've said that before. I'm at the other end of an email. You can also find me in the membership and one-to-one for more personal in-depth guidance and support so just a reminder of the special offer for the membership before I go it's a lovely lovely space the membership is a safe space to help you move past your fear of sobriety to help you feel empowered and inspired and uplifted by your choice to quit drinking because it is a choice It's where I hang out the most. It's where you can find um, lovely resources, including monthly workshops and meditations in our growing library. There's coaching calls every week with me in there and connection to other wonderful women who are doing exactly the same thing 
as you are. And right now, Sunday the 30th and Monday the 31st of October 2022, um, the price is on a special offer. So from £29 a month down to 20 which you will always pay 20 if you buy the membership this weekend. Or in dollars, I think it's from $37 down to $24. So if you buy the membership this weekend, Sunday, Monday, then that's all you will pay. And I really hope to see you in there. And don't forget that every new member also gets a free one-to-one call with me too. So you save on um, a one-to-one coaching call as well. And... If that sounds good, if that sounds exciting and inspiring, then come and join. The link is in the description below and I'd love to see you in there. In the meantime, though, I really hope that you've enjoyed listening to this podcast. Do send me a message if you've got any questions and Enjoy your Halloween weekend, whatever it is that you're doing, wherever you are. I'm sending you lots of love and support and permission to eat as much chocolate as you like, because I certainly will be. (laughs) Thanks for listening and bye for now.